Should you make a career out of your passion? By the end of this video, you're going to have crystal clear clarity on whether or not you should make a career out of your passion. So before I begin, let's create some context. Why are we even having this discussion? Why are you watching this video? If we were in 1950s America, you would go work in a mine, you would become a welder, you would go get a trade. Because before we accepted that work is work. That most people they don't want to go to work it's not something pleasant but we have to do it so we can earn a living now times have sort of shifted and we have this idea that sort of seeped into the mainstream of you need to love what you do and if you're not 100 passionate about your job that your life sucks and that you need to change it drastically i don't really think that's necessarily true i think that it's okay if you don't or if you're not 100 passionate about your work you should like your job obviously You shouldn't be miserable 40 hours of the week, but at the same time, not everyone is going to do their what they love for work, you know? Because most people like to play video games and go hang out on the beach or ride their bicycle. You're not going to be able to make a career out of playing Assassin's Creed. That being said, there are some people who have been able to turn their passion into a career. And so we can move on to the questions that you need to ask yourself to see if you are ready for this and if you should actually think about making a career out of your passion. So the first question is are you a dabbler or a hacker? Now these two terms come from George Leonard's book Mastery. And what George Leonard says is that there are people who are working towards mastery and there are other people who aren't. and of those people who aren't on the way to becoming masters of their craft two types are dabblers and hackers so what a hacker is is someone who chooses a skill or a hobby for example or even a profession a vocation and they hack that vocation to become proficient and but once they become proficient they don't continue to grow and improve they just stay at that level so an example of this is your four chord guitarist you might be someone who loves to play guitar and you do regularly play guitar but you never really move beyond the c d e and g songs you know you might have learned a couple bar chords here f bar chord things like that and you might have learned a little bit of you know different chords a minor etc etc but you never really took your guitar to the next level you didn't learn the music theory you didn't memorize the notes on the fretboard you didn't memorize scales you're you're a hacker you hacked enough to be able to play the guitar and have fun which is totally fine but you're not at that level where you're moving towards mastery and and we'll talk about why that's important later on in the video so if you're a hacker you probably should not try to make a career out of your passion and then if you're a dabbler Let's talk about the dabbler. A dabbler is someone who loves the newness and the experience of learning new things. He might be someone who picks up tennis and you know learns how to hit that ball and can you know keep back a nice volley back and forth back and forth. But once he sort of plateaus that skill, he he becomes bored, you know? And and George Leonard says that actually in a plateau there's a little bit of a regression, so you start getting a little bit worse. And so what a dabbler does is he doesn't want to fight through that plateau and just keep going. You know, George Leonard says that to to get to mastery, you have to literally do the motions every day. It, it it's rhythmic. You're just practicing for the sake of practicing. A true master practices for the sake of practicing. And and a dabbler doesn't want to do that. He 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 loves the high of that improvement, but once that plateaus, he's done. He's going to move on from tennis to maybe baseball or you know, he might go from the guitar to the piano. and and this is the traits and the characteristics of a dabbler so if you're a dabbler you are not suited to turn your passion into a career and this brings us to the second question which is how long have you been interested/actively involved with your passion you know if you're passionate about running for like a year and yeah you had some great success you went from a 5k to a 10k and and you really like running you don't really have enough skin in the game to provide value to people. 
if you've been creating music for like two years, some beats, and, and, and you're thinking that you're going to dive into this full time, it's probably not a good idea. The more time that you spent on your passion, the more recommended it is that you actually try to make a career out of it. Because as you've put in more time, you've likely had more success. Which brings us to the third question, which is how much success have you had in your passion? And what I mean by that, success can come in various ways, but some of them are very obvious. If we go back to that example of the guitars, if you're a guitarist and you can play many songs, you can play different styles, you've memorized many skills, and when you play, people really see that, wow, the, the, and not people, guitarists, other guitarists look up to you because most people would be impressed by a four chord guitarist, then you know you've had some success. A great example of this is, is calisthenics. So if you know you've had some success as a, as a calisthenics uh, in, in calisthenics workouts, because you can do those movements, you can do a muscle up, you can do the front lever, you could do the back lever. And if, and you have this success, which draws people to you. And, and when you have that, it, it's more recommended that you go and make a career out of your passion because you actually have the capability and the skills to provide value to people, to actually teach people. Yeah, you can actually teach them, okay, this is how you progress your way up to your first muscle up. And then this is how you improve your muscle up to a static muscle up. So you need to see how much success have you had and success can come in many forms. It, certifications are also another way of uh, assessing success while they're not really uh, the best way because for example nowadays there's hordes of fitness trainers who took a two-day course and they're fat and they're not healthy and they're not fit but they're certified to provide you know personal training to people because yeah they know how to show people how to do exercises but really if you're trying to make a, pa a career out of your passion you need to be someone who is an example a role model you need to be inspiring first and obviously if you're inspiring you're gonna have the knowledge because it's inherent if you're inspiring people by your amazing moves in calisthenics you're gonna inspire people and you're gonna have the knowledge obviously because you learned how to get there so these are the three questions you need to ask yourself am i a dabbler or a hacker how long have i been in this passion and how much success have i had